Okay, so hello everyone, and thank you for joining this Record of Future presentation. Uh, my name is Noor. I'm Technical Solutions Leader here at uh, Record of Future in EMEA. And today we're going to be talking about uh, Q4 malware trends that we observed towards the end of last year. You can sort of imagine what we're going to talk about <laughs> just by the title. Solar winds will, of course, be a topic that we mentioned today, but we're also going to be talking about some predictions that we made in Q3 that turned out to, uh, to come to fruition. Uh, we're going to be talking about ransomware and, of course, uh, mobile malware and the, pro and, the, um, and the increase in uptake that we've seen in mobile malware over the last quarter. So away we go. First topic. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is still a very uh, pressing issue within our sector. Ransomware has just become extremely popular amongst uh, threat actors. So let's talk about the trends that we've seen towards the end of last year and what implications they have on the future. So I don't think uh, any of us could have predicted the amount of um, activity in this space. We, of course, Record of Future predicted an increase in uptake in, in, in ransomware affiliate groups, and, uh, but it was hard to predict which groups would decline and which ones would increase. Quite an interesting uh, trend we observed was, um, uh, for example, FIN11, a financially motivated group that has been active around 2016, recently used CLOP ransomware in its attacks, uh, which uh, sees a huge shift for FIN11 away from its um, typical monetizing methods of custom malware. So this change in line with the larger trend of threat actors directing their attention towards you know, capitalizing on stolen data via extortion, as opposed to via other means which they typically use. So let's talk about Egregor and, and Maze ransomware. So Egregor, Egregor ransomware attacks have been on the rise since about Q4, which is illustrated quite nicely here in this timeline that we've picked out from Recorded Future. Uh, so the ransomware itself is part of Sekhmet, uh, which is a family of, uh, of malware that first surfaced around mid-September 2020. So the organizations impacted by Egregor in Q4 include um, video game developer, site uh, Tech, I'm trying to pronounce that right, as well as uh, Kmart, which is quite, which quite a large department store chain. Now, the, so there was a huge spike in Egregor attacks in mid-November of 2020. Uh, at the same time, there was the decline of the Maze ransomware. That really came in line with their um, big sort of press release, if you were to call it, uh, that they released uh, where they were officially shutting down and retiring. The release was actually quite uh, interesting to read. Uh, they very much took the moral high ground and stated how, you know, uh, organizations are not paying attention to cyber attacks. And if they did, then none of this would ever happen. So that's a quite interesting take on reality. Uh, I would very much uh, recommend you read that press release. It was very entertaining to watch threat actors take the moral high ground. So since the shutdown of Maze, ransom payments have also slowly transferred away from Maze back to Egregor between September and October. And we haven't really seen any new Maze victims during this period. So we believe that many of the affiliates of Maze ransomware have migrated over to Egregor and that ransomware and that the ransomware variants are connected due to similarities in code, um, as well as the ransom notes and the payment website names. So there's a huge amount of similarity between the two. This might have been a case of rebrand uh, by the uh, by the maze group uh, leaders well, it's hard to tell but we can definitely see similarities between the code the ransom notes that are used and the payment websites that are being used so we're not just about doom and gloom on this uh, on this presentation we want to actually recommend uh, actions to take so we recommend that all organizations first and foremost maintain offline backups and implement proactive security measures things like multi-factor authentication and segmentation wherever possible. We say that every quarter, but we need to say that every quarter because it really comes down to the basics when it comes to ransomware. There really is no uh, surefire way to avoid this. Additionally, recorded future clients can use um, some hunting packages uh, that are available uh, through the platform to detect uh, said ransomware family. So we have hunting packages for the likes of Clop Ransomware, Egregor, uh, both the stage one and stage two packer, we also have uh, hunting packages to detect maze ransomware, as well as the TTPs used by the new Conti ransomware, which is a which is a new family that we observed. Okay, so moving on, desktop malware, and this really wouldn't be a Q4 malware update uh, if we didn't talk about 
uh, solar winds. And unfortunately, this was a huge story um, back in uh, December, sort of midway through December, large supply chain attack on solar winds, which led to the infection of you know over 200 organizations, including prominent US government entities, well-known technology organizations, um, probably the most significant malware event of the year, just sheer, sheerly due to the complexity, uh, the sophistication of the attack, and the diverse set of, uh, of victims. So let's talk about the implications of this attack for a bit. Without going into details as to what exactly happened, this could be a webinar on its own, or this could be a presentation on its own, excuse me. I mean, we could really dive into the into the techniques and the sophistication of this attack, but that's sort of like trying to sum up the Ocean's Eleven casino heist in 15 seconds. You know, it, it's just too complex, it's too sophisticated, it's too unique to even try and gloss over the details. Um, what we do know is the following. The investigation is still ongoing with limited details released to the public as of now. What is known is that uh, we are probably going to see more information released about this attack uh, in the coming months. I don't think that we've seen all of the information regarding this attack. I think we are still yet to see the major victims of this attack. Um, every week or so, we are sh uh, given or shed light upon a new company that has been affected by uh, Sunburst. So I don't think we're fully aware of the, of the, of the extent of this attack uh, as of yet. Now we could dive into the technical details, but we all know the story. Um, a backdoor known as Sunburst was used and was delivered via Trojanized updates. So uh, clients of, of SolarWinds who thought they were downloading legitimate updates were actually downloading a Trojanized update with the Sunburst backdoor. Extremely uh, uh, bespoke and uh, very little automation here. Everything was very much manual, including initial access, pivoting, and, uh, uh, and privileged access. So uh, wh what's the moral of the story here? Since that disclosure, researchers have identified four uh, discrete malware variants, Sunspot, Sunburst, Teardrop, and Raindrop. And for those, we put together a mitigations uh, slide here, which is to really uh, give clients and, you know, just the cybersecurity intelligence agency, uh, sorry, community in, in, as a whole, some steps to follow and some actions to take. So really from our end, from Recorded Future, we recommend that anyone using SolarWinds within their technology stack should take the following initial mitigation measures. Configure your IDS and IPS um, uh, with the external IP addresses and domains listed as tagged entities within this report. Uh, you can find the full version of this report on our website in which we list a huge amount of entities um, uh, that you can uh, uh, consider re for review as well as blocking uh, outright. Review your historical log data for the presence of these indicators. We would strongly consider uh, conducting Yara scans across your organization, deploying Snort and Clam AV rules with the, with the, uh, that we have provided within FireEye's Sunburst Countermeasures uh, GitHub page. Uh, so FireEye have also released a number of, um, of hunting packages for these, uh, for these tools in particular. And we would also isolate the SolarWinds servers while further review and investigation is being conducted. So in addition to that, we also have two hunting packages that we've released uh, to our clients. One is to detect versions of SolarWinds Orion software with the Sunburst backdoor, and another is to detect the Supernova web shell backdoor that was used uh, for further access. So those are some mitigation steps that we would recommend. We all know the story. I think uh, a prediction for the next quarter is that we are still going to see the extent of the attack in the sense that we are still um, going to see uh, organizations that are going to come forward and say that they were affected by uh, this attack. I don't want to speculate on who that will be. We're just following on what uh, we know to be the facts and uh, and what we know to be uh, completely true. There have been vendors that have been claimed to be at, uh, uh, targeted who have then come out and said that that's completely untrue. So you really have to wait for the vendor themselves or the organization themselves to announce that without speculating ourselves too much. I think that's the, probably the only fair way to go about this. So that's that's really uh, uh, what we have about Sunburst and and, uh, and SolarWinds. Now, TrickBot, <clears throat> the rise and fall of, and the shift to QuackBot or CACBot, however you want to pronounce that. This is a really interesting trend. I think <clears throat> if you'll recall, uh, 
where, where do we go back here? This is really, we're, we're traveling back into sort of uh, October time, really in, into the lead up of the US election. So let's give a bit of background here. So TrickBot started as an advanced banking Trojan used to harvest credentials from victim systems. Since then, it's evolved into a multi-purpose malware downloader and probably one of the largest botnets in the world. I'd say only Emotet stands up to TrickBot in terms of pervasiveness. Now, um, according to Microsoft at the time, this is back in October, TrickBot had affected over 1 million computing devices around the world since late 2016. So a huge amount of prevalence. Now, if we rewind back to October of, of last year around the election, there was actually a huge initiative by the uh, cyber, US Cyber Command and an industry coalition led by Microsoft. And they all separately attempted to disrupt TrickBot's infrastructure. Uh, they both, I mean, there's no coincidence here. They were both extremely concerned as to the um, targeting of the election infrastructure being used in the build up to the 2020 election. Uh, I doubt these organizations suddenly woke up and realized that TrickBot is a, is a threat to global cybersecurity. They were especially um, concerned with the aggressive tempo for, for targeting election infrastructure. So that, that initiative uh, was very clear and, and, and very obvious. So in, in September of that year or last year, Cyber Command actually poisoned a lot of TrickBot infections uh, by pointing their command and control configurations to a beacon to the local host. <laughs> so um, uh, basically severing the TrickBot operator's access to those existing infections. So huge amount of effort by Microsoft and the US Cyber Command. And that is highlighted very nicely here in this timeline where we see a big gap in TrickBot activity around that time. We've seen an uptick since, so the story isn't over yet. We can see that uh, there, there's been a, a, a steady increase back in TrickBot activity since that time. Now, the other trend that we're looking at, so ignoring the blue uh, bars you see up top, now let's move down to the green, which is quack, Quackbot or CACBot activity. So parallel to that, we've seen a huge amount of activity or a huge increase in activity uh, in relation to Quackbot. Quackbot is actually an, inform an information stealing Trojan that was first discovered, we're talking way back in 2007, um, and has recently experienced a huge resurgence. It's typically distributed through exploit kits and weaponized documents uh, delivered through phishing campaigns. Uh, and then it typically maintains persistence by adding itself to a registry run key or creating a scheduled task. So classic TTPs there. However, we saw that eGregor ransomware operators, which we talked about earlier in the presentation, began using Quackbot in a similar fashion to TrickBot. So it's likely that the, when, when TrickBot gained attention in the media and was being the target of all these takedown efforts by the likes of the US Cyber, Cyber Command and, um, and Microsoft, it's very likely that threat actors began shifting to a similar loader malware like Quackbot to further their infections. So we've created hunting packages for both the TrickBot and QuackBot. You can find those within the platform. Those are both very good to operationalize the intelligence that we're mentioning here. And you can use, um, you can use those to actively hunt for both uh, loader, uh, loader malware. But there's clearly a, a shift in threat actor act, uh, behavior in the sense that TrickBot became too hot. It became uh, too popular for its own good. It was uh, specifically being targeted by the US Cyber Command and Microsoft. Hence, we can see this convenient shift away from TrickBot as a loader and over to QuackBot. So uh, uh, easy trend to observe there. Threat actors were most likely looking for an alternative. However, the story isn't over there, as we can clearly see that both have increased in prevalence since then. So while TrickBot had that minor gap in the middle, we can see that that activity has continued to rise since. So mobile malware. This is probably the, this is probably the most uh, uh, low-key prediction we made in Q3, which I think has, has come to fruition quite nicely. So in 2020, last year, um, we, this, this is very much in line with our prediction. We saw a huge uptick in mobile malware, especially in, in areas of the world where Android is extremely prevalent. And the Q, in Q4, mobile malware landscape was really dominated by Android malware, which is completely in line with our observations from that previous quarter in Q3. And we really continue to observe the most targeting of users in the Middle East, North Africa, 
and Southeast Asia as compared to other users in other regions. And that's simply because Android is more popular in those regions of the world. Um, based on the large amount of Android user base in these geographies, this trend is probably going to continue into Q Q1 of this year. And obviously we'll produce a report when that happens. So I think highlights of this include the prevalence of WAP Dropper, which we'll talk about in just a second, and also RANA, which is a new malware, uh, a mobile malware that, that we observed. Now, a common theme amongst all of these mobile malwares is the initial access vector, which is really interesting, which is that usually in every single one of these mobile malware uses a trojanized app, such as gaming or a utility like a flashlight or a calculator, something like that. And these apps are always available on third-party app stores. So we highly recommend that mobile device users, especially Android users, only download applications from trusted developers and verified app stores and keep your operation uh, operating systems up to date. Uh, we mentioned WAP Dropper. WAP Dropper actually is very popular in Southeast Asia. Um, uh, it exploits the, uh, the WAP protocol, which was used for mobile payments back in the day of GPRS and 3G. Um, since most smartphones still support the WAP uh, protocol, we've seen that uh, threat actors are taking advantage of that quite nicely. We've also observed the RANA Android mobile malware, which has strong links to APT39, which is an Iranian nation state sponsored group. So for the Middle Eastern uh, members of our audience, I would highly recommend focusing on RANA as a, as a mobile malware of, of note, uh, since it seems to be more of spyware as opposed to the, uh, the other uh, mobile malwares, which uh, tend to be focusing on, uh, uh, on financial motivations, whereas RANA is very much fixated on collecting SMS data, logging phone call data, taking photos, uh, collecting data, and, and exfiltrating those outwards. So very much a strain of spyware there. This is going to continue into Q1. I can almost uh, guarantee that. Excellent. So let's talk about Outlook before we wrap up. Ransomware is going to continue to be a persistent and significant threat to organizations. That is no doubt especially in the critical sectors such as vaccine distribution, um, cold chain, for example, uh, and extortion websites are going to be extremely popular. We also think that ransomware families are going to merge. So operators are probably going to find ways to quicken their operations. They're going to centralize um, very much like any other industry on the planet. Um, everything converges, you know, kind of like the cybersecurity industry right now, very fragmented, lots of players, that will soon converge as time goes on, very similar to ransomware operators. Those are going to converge and centralize and, um, and become more of enterprises as opposed to a disparate industry. You're going to see multiple malware families and uh, multiple offensive security tools. To talk about SolarWinds, it's very likely that the new information regarding SolarWinds uh, will be disclosed in the, co in, the, in the coming months. And I think we're going to see additional victims uh, being mentioned or announced. I don't think we've seen the full extent of the of the impact of solar winds. I think we're just scratching the surface. And it's very likely that these threat actors were involved in other intrusions that we don't know about that will maintain uh, that will remain undetected for a long long time. And lastly, it's very likely that Android malware will continue to dominate the malware the mobile malware landscape throughout this year. Uh, I strongly believe so. Uh, in alignment with our findings, we expect that these mobile malware variants will be used to, for all kinds of use cases, exfiltrate user data, uh, uh, financial and, and, uh, and, and espionage, all kinds of use cases for mobile malware. So with that, thank you for listening. I really hope that was useful and valuable. Uh, please head over to our website for the full version of the report that this presentation was based on. You can also sign up for our Cyber Daily and you can also use our free browser extension, which enriches IOCs on any web page that you're looking at. So with that, thank you so much for joining. I really hope that was useful and have a great day. Thank you so much.